biomimicry beavers and beaver dam that is something that would be the focus for this class but our sole idea would be better solutions for hydroelectric power which is one of the major powers across the globe with more than 1038 gigawatts of production through hydroelectric power how we can actually reinvent the technology and what have been the steps that have been taken a lot of it has been inspired from the concept of biomimicry now you might understand or you might ask a question what is biomimicry so mimicry as we mean uh, is modeling something or imitating something but here what we are trying to imitate is the biological models that means the real models that existed on the ground we are trying to imitate those models to bring in suitable changes in our hydroelectric power potential systems so here we would be talking about a case study of beavers and the concept of beaver dam and how that has been worked around for bringing in restorative hydrology and the concept of restoration ecology so the whole idea here is bringing in models simulations elements from the real biological world the real earth the real planet and bringing those imitating those in order to bring in sustainable solutions for energy generation so here we focus why biomimicry has been important first of all so it's a changing our view of life changing the way we know about the earth changing our lens through which we see the earth identifying the sustainable model which could be much more everlasting much more uh, vigorous and can bring in regenerative designs and bringing in a greater stress on protection of climate and conservation of climate so with this idea we move forward to understand the hydroelectric power potential across the globe now definitely this is one of an important issues because why we talk about so much about hydroelectric power it is easy to capture it has no pollution no uh, greenhouse emissions that are seen no fuel combustion uh, pollution that could be seen and a significant amount of energy that has been generated globally can be seen so definitely hydroelectric power is one of the very important sources of energy generation but let's look on to the gloomy side of the picture when it comes to the gloomy side of the picture definitely with uh, hydroelectric power stations what is happening we are damming the water now this damming up of the water brings in stagnant water as soon as the water gets stagnant there is harmful algal bloom that could be seen that could turn out to be highly toxic for human beings sometimes the traditional methods through which the hgb projects are being built are outdated a lot of structure is actually a threat to the marine uh, aquatic system and the marine ecosystem diversion of waterways takes place and all these are some of the major dangers now when i say threat to the aquatic systems you might question how so the danger of damming is very very clear first of all what happens is these dams actually have very sharp turbines they have very sharp thin blades now what happens is the migration that takes place for uh, salmon and eel now salmon and eel migration when it takes place this obstructs the migratory route and when these turbines are moving at a very fast pace from the fresh water to the sea water uh, the fins of these fishes get trapped in the turbines and there is a significant damage to the aquatic life of uh, the region also there is a sudden change in the pressure because of the fast moving turbines there is a sudden switch in the pressure and this change in the pressure kills the fishes because fishes are not able to adapt themselves to sudden changes in the pressure also because of the process of damming most of the migratory route is being obscured or blocked so there needs to be a proper methodology to understand what kind of sustainable ways we can develop and there is where we understood and brought around this class so understanding the solutions have been very very important so we need to develop a solution which is definitely wildlife friendly which can protect the fishes 
and change the future of the hydropower generation now what we need is a fish safe turbine so as you can see a turbine is moving with very thin and sharp blades now what would happen this would be highly detrimental to the fishes so natal which is natal energy which is a company of california has come up with bill gates foundation the breakthrough energy ventures with the idea of natal turbine now this turbine is unique because this turbine has thicker blades and numerous experiments have been done on anesthetized fishes to understand what kind of pressure changes and what kind of blade movements can be tolerated by those fishes after a rigorous study they have come out with a system which is much more sustainable where the blades are thicker the movement speed is being uh, taken into account and even uh, the natural process of development of the region has to be taken into account now with this we can definitely preserve the wildlife and the aquatic life so this is one side of the story however across the globe we are getting concerned about changing uh, patterns of weather conditions climate conditions and we are highly bothered about extreme weather phenomena of a series of flood events or droughts that are being caused and unusual weather patterns that are being affecting the regions across the globe so there needs to be restorative solutions to solve this problem now for this we have an inspiration which has been driven from the beavers and the idea of building the beaver dam which has been done by the beavers is unique which is mainly seen in the region of uh, cascade so if you uh, go on to the region of north america the western part of it you would see a lot of uh, the region where you would have beaver dams that are being built and these dams were unique why because these dams first of all are smaller in size they have a significant structure which cause slow movement of water because of the slow movement of water there is ample of seepage so the groundwater gets recharged continuously so it's good for the groundwater recharge also you have uh, rising water tables that could be seen since you would have sufficient amount of ground water the level of water table would rise and that would be beneficial in long run so there would be a reduced number of drought stretches that could be seen reduced number of flood events that could be seen so the same model of beaver dam has been replicated by the various organizations under restorative hydro projects where they rather than bringing up one big dam there is series of smaller dams that could chain up to a ma main dam and this way the local communities can benefit this way the groundwater levels can be protected uh, slower movement of water would take place it would also conserve the aquatic species and there would be much more coordinated effort that would be seen we have a interesting covering from uh, coverage from bbc to understand this now under this coverage as you can see i'll just play the video here to help you understand how beavers actually move so beavers are actually vegetarian what they do is they have very sharp incisors now with these sharp incisors they uh, they just suck out the juicy part of the stems and a uh, interesting phenomena is rather than cutting the whole tree to its girth they just cut it half way round once the tree is cut half way round it automatically fills down now beavers are experts they have a very good team spirit and a uh, projected work that they do so what they do is they fell the trees as you can see here they would just bite a little of it they have their incisors made of iron they are uh, red orange in color and they keep growing so that's the job they would take this piece of what a log in the water now what happens in these areas where beavers are found these beavers take these water logs deep beneath the water and mix it with the silt there why do they do so this would keep the leaves fresh for longer time and during the winter months when 
you would have ice covering that would be seen on the top of the water these beavers can utilize the water that is being present underneath and the green leaves which would remain fresh for longer period of time so that is one of the things they create an artificial fridge which would preserve the food for them during the winter months again during the other months they come out and they create a boundary so all the logs are being deposited then from deep within the water they bring in the silt and the mud onto the surface as you can see the tree would fill here it's just half cut by the weaver it would fill down and this would be taken as a log piece in the deep waters now over the surface they create dams now these pieces of uh, woods which are uh, joined by the sa sand and the silt which is being brought from deep within the waters it is very very important to cover the surface and then you have a whole sort of dam that is being created now why beavers create this dam is further interesting beavers create this dam to protect themselves from bears so they are trying to protect themselves from other predators and that those are the bears now the only path of entry into the hills or the mountains that they create towards the periphery is through the water so from the water they enter into they have a small tunnel through which they enter into the dam structure as you can see so from the underwater they enter inside uh, the hill that is being created to protect themselves from bear attack and any situation in which they are alarmed they would just enter into it so this is a kind of model that is being used by beavers and in this whole process they are unaware that they are so much helping the humanity to create water blocks to increase the groundwater recharge levels and to raise the water table level so preservation of beavers uh, has been a very important idea and here we are using the concept of biomimicry where we are mimicking the environment that is being created by beavers by building up the beaver dams and that is the same logic we are creating under restorative hydrology and the various projects again the natles turbine uh, turbine is one of the examples which has been uh, working with machine learning satellite imageries bringing in much more enhanced picture of the region uh, to help understand the scenario better so we would be covering many more interesting lectures on environment and planet earth so stay tuned for further updates from our side have a wonderful day ahead